Well, good morning, everybody. I'm just going to come over here and grab a, a quick glass of, of water, try not to kill myself in the process. I'm, uh, I'm actually very pleased to be speaking this morning. The, it was the conference organizers, they had asked me to, thanks, they had asked me to speak on the streaming business model, and it's one that I'm particularly passionate about. I guess my background, I was, uh, it was back in 2004, and I got a phone call from a company that said that they're planning on creating this company, and it's called a streaming company, did I want to come and work for them? And I remember phoning my father and saying, uh, hey, Dad, should I take this job? And he asked me about it. His first question was, i got to grab the clicker. His first question was, how many employees? Could I grab that? How many employees does the company have? And I said, well, if you count me, uh, it would be one. <laughs> and so that was my introduction to the streaming business model. We, it was at Silver Wheaton. And we grew the company to about a $5 billion market capitalization. And so I've been doing streaming now for eight years. It's something that I am particularly passionate about. And so when the conference organizers asked me to speak on it, I was happy to do so. I asked them, what specifically in streaming do you want me to speak about? And they said, well, tell people what streaming is. Tell people the advantages of streaming. And tell them what you're looking for when you're trying to do a stream with a company. What sort of characteristics and qualities of a mind that you're looking for. And so to give the speech that they wanted, a stream is basically a payment that you make to a company in exchange for a contract, the right to purchase a certain percentage of production. Its advantages are that it's not as dilutive as equity or as risky as debt. And we're looking for good quality projects with good management teams and low cost of production. And so that's my speech that they wanted. I'm done. And so now I'm going to actually talk about something else that I want to talk about. <laughs> What I really want to talk about is why I believe mine financing, as you know it, is dead. And I truly and honestly believe that right here in December 2012, we are on the precipice of a massive change over the next 10 years of how mine financing is done. Now, people frequently talk about it. It's in the media. It's talked about at conferences like this, how mining CEOs have failed the investors and have not performed well. I think what's more important is that the financiers, I believe, have failed the mining companies. Uh, up until 2004, we we're using uh, traditional debt and traditional equity only, or some hybrid of the two, to finance all assets into production, irregardless of whether that asset's characteristics made sense to use those, those types of financing. Uh, we are in the middle of a change, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Before I do, to actually give some understanding or context around why I believe the industry is headed where it is, there's a fundamental thing that all of us need to truly understand the implications of. It's a part of the nature of the mining industry. We all know it. We all say we understand it, but I don't think we truly understand the repercussions of it. And that's how tough it is to build a mine on time and on budget. And so. We actually hired at Sandstorm a summer student uh, who became a full-time employee. This was back in 2009. And I said, welcome to the mining world. What I want you to do is spend the next month doing a study, and I want you to answer a number of questions. The first question is, what percentage of mining companies actually build their mine on time? And so she spent a week, went through every single one asset company, putting their first asset into production over the last seven years, and came back to me and she said, I started tracking it from when they first gave guidance. And the answer is none, like it rounded down to 0%. <laughs> and so I said, OK, well, let's refine the study and come up with a number that actually means something. Let's start tracking what percentages of companies actually built their minds on time, start counting from the date that they give guidance, and that guidance for the first time was within a year. So if a company put out a press release saying, two quarters from now, we're going to have our mind built, what percent of those companies got their mind built within two quarters? And the answer over there is that 78% of companies still did not hit that guidance for first production when that guidance was within a year. So if you think about it, and an average mine takes around two years to build, some obviously longer, some shorter, but if it takes you two years to build a mine, and then you don't build it on time, and you actually run late, the second part of the study that we did was, in that 78% cohort, what per, how late were the companies? So if they said the mine will get up and running in two quarters, if they were late, how late were they? And the answer is, on average, the average mining company was eight months late from the point that they gave guidance within a year. So if it was supposed to take you two years, it ended up taking you three years. 
And then the most startling aspect of this was the next stage of the study. We said, finally, once they start production, how much do they produce in their first year of production compared to what they said they were going to produce? And it's because everyone who's ever built a mine, and I've been involved in financing probably 25 different mines, no mine ever works properly when you start it up because it's just a very complex process. It's not that management have made mistakes. It's just very complex. There's a process that you have to go through once you start producing. It always takes longer than people anticipate. And you got to get your mill working. And so the average company only produced in their first year of production between 20 to 50 percent of what they had guided the market that they would produce. Now, many of those mining companies went on to eventually get their mines working well. Uh, not all did, but most did. But it's that first year where you're losing a significant amount of money as a miner from an operating cost perspective. So you thought you were going to build a mine in two years. It took you three. And in your fourth year, you lost tons and tons of money. And so if you think and take that back to how we've traditionally done mine financing in the industry, debt, bankers don't like to give debt with terms longer than five years. Now, I just want to be careful and clarify anything that I might suggest that debt is a bad idea here. I do believe that debt has a role to play in the mining industry. I believe project financing has a role to play. I believe project financing bankers have an important role to play. But I think that, that we do need to change the industry, and it is happening right now. So if you think that a bank is only going to give you five years to repay your loan, and you're losing money and spending way more than you thought you were going to be for the first four, and in your fifth year, you may break even or make your first year of profit, you are going to be in a very tough situation. I actually remember I was flying on an airplane. This is back in 2009. And uh, I was doing what everybody does when they're on airplanes, when someone's reading something beside them that you're m sort of interested in and was kind of peeking over. And I won't mention the name of the company, but it was a director of a company who I had never, never met before. And he was reading a director's binder for a director's meeting that was coming up. And it was the project financing section of it. And what the management was recommending was financing almost all of the project with debt. And I won't mention the name of the bank, but I sort of kind of saw the terms. And I was familiar with the project. And, and my first thought was, holy cow, they are going to get into a lot of trouble. And uh, three weeks later, press release came out that they were going to be taking on all of that debt. And I'll fast forward. Three years later, I got a phone call from the banker saying, help us. <laughs> Will you provide this company with some money so that we can get out of our position? Because it took them longer to build it. Uh, they overran on capital. They ran out of money. And they, it's not working yet. And so we sent in our technical team and said, this is a good mine. It's a good management team. They've just had all of the normal startup problems that mining companies do. And so we'll finance them. So we actually helped buy the banks out of their position and provided them with the stream. When I was younger, um, and has been reiterated since a couple of times, my father gave me this advice. He said, don't take capital from people whose incentives are not aligned with yours. And he was speaking from particular experience. Uh, most people don't know this about me. My close friends do. And I guess now everyone at Minds and Money is going to know. I actually grew up uh, in some of my earlier formative years in low-income housing because my parents had borrowed money from a, a bank whose incentives were not aligned with theirs. And when they were not able to pay their mortgage, they got kicked out of their house. And so we grew up in low-income housing. And, and, and Actually, while we were living in that low-income housing, my dad helped start up a business. It became profitable very quick. We were able to get out of the low-income housing. That business made money every year for 10 years straight without exception. It was net income positive. It was cash flow positive. It did have some debt. And in the, uh, the 12th year, it had some cash flow problems. And the bank got nervous. It seized all the inventory, shut down the business, and, and my dad lost everything. And that's when he gave me this piece of advice. Anyway, given all of that, the final stage of the study that we had done was an empirical test of if the traditional way that mines are financed doesn't make a lot of sense with debt and the nature of how mines work, uh, how do the stocks actually perform after these companies take on the debt relative to their peers in the mining industry? So you can see on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and the left-hand side are companies that have between 10% of their enterprise value or market cap in the form of debt. And on average, they outperformed their peers by approximately 4%. On the right-hand side, this was all companies that were putting mines into production where they had borrowed an amount of money 
that was greater than 20% of their enterprise value, on average, once they went to go put their minds into production, they underperformed their peers by 32%. So empirically, it, is, it makes intuitive sense, but empirically we have evidence that financiers have been failing the mining industry in terms of the, the types of things that they have actually offered. So the, historically, the choice for people is, do I take on debt and risk the balance sheet or do I take on equity? And anyone here who's a CEO or an executive in a mining industry, you know that if your stock right now is trading at 0 0.2 times NAV and you choose not to take on debt, then historically your alternative is I can go raise equity, but I'm going to have to dilute my shareholders massively at 0 0.2 times equity. And so at Sandstorm, we actually do this spreadsheet and financial analysis for companies that we're working on in advance. We'll say, here's your share price. For example, if your share price is 40 cents today, but your NAV is $2, and you're trading at 0.2 times NAV, and you actually go and raise all of the equity you need to build this project, you're going to be resetting your NAV from $2 per share down to somewhere, depends on how much equity you have to raise, but say 60 cents per share. So all of a sudden, you were trading it at 0.2 times NAV per share before the equity financing, and now you're closer to after the equity financing, trading at about 0.7 times NAV per share, and, uh, and in the end, the equity shareholders don't actually make that much money because the very nature of the equity issuance resets your NAV per share. So that kind of leads us to 2004 when Silver was created, uh, Silver Wheaton was created. So in 2004, the combined market cap of all of the streaming companies in the whole world was obviously zero. In the last eight years, the combined market cap of the streaming industry, and remember, this is capital that was invested directly in mining companies through funds and institutional investors and insurance companies that has now been pulled out and is no longer invested in those mining companies. It's put, been put into streaming companies, and the streaming companies are deploying the capital. In the last eight years, it's grown to $27 billion. That's the combined market cap of the main streaming companies. Now, there's only four of us, and I believe that over the next 10 years, you're going to see the number of streaming companies probably go from something like four to something between 10 and 20, and you're also going to see private equity getting into the game. And I believe over the next 10 years, the amount of capital that's going to be pulled out of the mining industry directly and put into streaming companies is going to be in the hundreds of billions of dollars. So we're in the process of a paradigm shift of how investors are fundamentally allocating their capital. And so what I think is right now we're in a situation where streaming streaming companies are going to become ever more important than they are. Now, one thing that I want to, to state between the, the benefits of streaming, and we've already talked about how it's lower risk than debt and it's less dilution than equity, but one thing that I fundamentally want to talk about is today what I think we've done is we've offered a new alternative that sort of bypasses this whole riskiness of debt and the dilutive nature of equity. We are, as a streaming company, aligned with our incentives in the mining company. So our goal is to make the mining company as successful as possible. You always want to ensure that your capital is held by someone who has their incentives aligned by you. But what fundamentally I believe is that we have not yet solved the full problem. I don't believe that the streaming companies, as we all understand them in the room here today, have found the best way to to finance mining companies. I think probably most people expected me to come up here today and say how wonderful streaming has been and why everyone should do streaming the way you know streaming today. What I'm actually here to say today is that streaming itself is changing dramatically right now. So streaming was invented by accident, actually. What most people don't know is that the first streams that were done were never meant to be a way to finance a mining company. They were done as a value arbitrage opportunity. So back in, in 2004, silver companies were trading at a three times NAV multiple compared to 1.8 times gold companies. That's why Silver Wheaton was created, was to arbitrage that value difference. And the whole point was to create a contract that extracted as much value as possible from the mine and stuck it in a vehicle that would trade at this three times NAV multiple. So the very nature of a stream was something that was designed to usurp as much profit as possible. Well, that's not what streaming companies are today. 
at Sandstorm, our goal is to create a financing alternative for a mining company. That's what we are today. We're not a value arbitrage <laughs> structure. We are a mine financing company whose sole goal is to create win-win financings that allow us to profit, that allow the mining companies to profit, that allow the shareholders of the mining companies to do much, much better. And because of that, we've had to change what a stream fundamentally is. So a stream before used to be X percent of production for the entire life of the mine forever and ever. A stream today, so for example, th this morning, we signed our latest streaming contract. We're giving approximately $40 million to an Australian company called Mutiny Golds. And that streaming contract is the most flexible streaming contract that's ever been created in the history of streaming. And they continue to get more and more flexible and better and better for the mining companies. That contract gives them a provision that they can buy back uh, half of the contract. It, uh, they came to us during the negotiation and they said, we are, we are concerned that we're going to have to spend a whole bunch more capital expanding the mine. Here's the specific capital we might spend, but we might not spend it. And so what we did is we structured the contract. So if they make that decision to spend it, then Sandstorm will pay a percentage of those costs so that we're not just sort of free carry uh, riding on all of the, the things that they spend on their project. Uh, we defined a very tight area of inf influence where if they find additional ore bodies nearby that we have to pay our percentage of the capital to actually develop those ore bodies. So streams have fundamentally changed so that now it is a partnership with the company. It is no longer the way we understood streaming. But what I, what I am trying to do now as a CEO of Sandstorm is go from what we have today as a streaming business model and become sort of the leading edge streaming company because I believe that the industry is going to have more competition and I want Sandstorm to be the one always on the forefront. So this is the first time that we've ever announced this publicly or even talked about this publicly, but we've, we've recently decided to do a Sandstorm as although we are a streaming company and streaming will always be the core of what we do. We are now expanding into other forms of capital because we, we understand that a stream should not be designed to take out a, too much profit from the mining company and that other forms of capital are needed to get mines into production. And we want to be able to play up and down the capital structure of companies. So in, in Mutiny, for example, the stream we announced this morning, we're actually going to be investing in some of their equity. We just put out an offer to a mining company yesterday where we would be providing a stream and we would be providing a small amount of subordinated debt and we would be willing to be a syndicate member in their senior secured debt package and we would be willing to invest in some of their equity. So what we're trying to do at Sandstorm is be the first point of call for mining companies when they want to go and finance because we can actually play in all areas. The stream will always be a portion of what we do. We're not going to lend money uh, without having a stream. But we are going to try to be the interaction of all of the forms of financing so that we can actually sit down with the mining company and determine based on this mine what is the best way to finance it. And because our incentives are aligned with the mining company's incentives, the debt piece that would come from Sandstorm obviously is a lot less risky because of that incentive alignment than it would be otherwise. Now, what Sandstorm wants to do, though, is continue to work with project banks. So if there's a reasonable amount of debt that is required on the project, that the project banks can come in, do what they do, we can work with them, and we'll provide a portion of the capital, and they can help also do some of the structuring. So that's what Sandstorm's trying to be. We want to be the most aggressive streaming company. We want to change the streaming industry. The streaming industry is in its infancy. I remember uh, it, when I got married, I was given a Palm Pilot for a wedding gift, and I thought that was the most amazing thing ever. Has anyone here ever had a Palm Pilot? Yeah, a few people. <laughs> no one wants to admit it. But uh, you know, if I was asked, do, would Nolan, if you were the CEO of a mining company, would you ever do a stream? Uh, I would say if it was one of the original streams, probably not. But the way that we're designing the business today, I think it's the most exciting uh, the most exciting part of the entire mining industry is how we're changing mine finance, and it's, it's very, very good. We've, we've gone from offering Palm Pilots to offering you know, Samsung, Galaxy, SG, whatever, whatever you want to call them. It's a very, very exciting time for the mining industry. It's an exciting time for mining finance. So however we used to finance mining companies 10 years ago, I can promise you one thing. 10 years from now, the industry is going to look dramatically different. So thanks very much for spending some time and listening to that. And